Morning, folks. Here we are uh, actually over at my dad's shop today. I've got Joey with us. He came in from New Mexico. Hola, everybody. And we are going to uh, go through the work that we did on his Overland trailer. Uh, now, we built this thing. It's been over a year ago now. To give you a little backstory, basically, I mean, everybody had a COVID project, right? Yeah. And uh, when we moved to New Mexico, when me and my wife moved to New Mexico, um, a little a little after that, Barrett actually moved to New Mexico for a job opportunity. He was there for a couple of years. He's back in Louisiana now. Um, and during COVID, me and my wife, we love camping. So we decided we wanted to do um, a little more camping, getting a little further back out in the woods. And I had a pretty capable Jeep. Um and so we decided to build a. I decided that I wanted to build a trailer that would be capable of doing that. My background, um, as far as mechanical stuff goes, is more in blacksmithing and carpentry. And I did that for a couple of years. Barrett's is fabrication and design. And our other brother, Matt, um, he's, his background's in mechanic and work. Well, I decided I wanted to build this trailer. And uh, Barrett, being relatively close, just a couple hours away from me, Having that background in um, and a welding rig, that helped. Yeah, <laughs> but having the background in fabrication, design, and welding, um, I pitched the project to him, and he was like, "Man, this would be awesome." Yeah, yeah. So uh, we started talking about it. Joey started putting together a parts list. Um, Actually, I shipped the axles to your house. Yeah, axles I had the axles drop shipped to my house. Right. We started <laughs> piecing together uh, a lot of stick metal. We needed. Um, you know, some heavy wall rectangle tubing, yeah. a little bit of L angle, some plate. Yeah. Uh, and so we got all our pieces together and we're going to go through uh, some of it because at the time I didn't own these cool GoPros and the gear that I've got now. So we're just taking pictures with our phones. Um, so we're going to walk through the photographs right quick and talk about that. And then Joey has done a walk around of the trailer kind of pointing out some of the, the key features and the cool stuff. And we'll post that up at the end of the video. Yeah, that'll be at the end of the video. But, um, yeah, I mean, basically everything, you'll see it as we build it, but everything was sourced locally well, where Barrett lived in southern New Mexico. Yep. And, um, you know, except for a couple odds and ends that I ordered off Amazon, like I said, drop shipped to his house. That was the easiest way to that do it. That was super nice, yeah. Yeah, so... Go ahead. Let's it was weird, though, not knowing what was going on. I show up, and there's this big stick in my front yard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Barrett, Barrett would call me about once a week and be like, hey, what's this giant box in my house? <laughs> <laughs> but it worked out. Yeah. So, so let's, dive into the, let's dive into the photographs. Um, so, and just another side note, man, sourcing materials at the start of COVID was a pain. Oh, yeah. We went to what, like? Four different yards before we found the metal we needed? Yeah. We had to go to, we went to two. One was a trailer manufacturer place that let us buy a few sticks of metal. One was a junkyard that uh, let us buy some some scrap plate, but we had to go there when they were open. Yeah. Um, we went to another. Went to a feed and seed store, actually. Feed and seed store that actually had some metal out back they let us get. Yep. Yeah, yeah it was an interesting piece of it all together. It was, it was. Anyway, yeah. So, so in this first picture, we're looking at the frame. Uh, and we just, this is just barely starting out. Yeah. Um, and if you see, the sticks along the side are um, a 10-foot stick that we notched and then stitched together there. So, the runner all the way to the tongue is one 10-foot stick. And then in the next picture there, it's me starting to weld this up together. Yeah. Uh, but we, getting that box was probably what took us the longest. Just getting yeah, everything making square. sure that was square. I wanted to make real sure that was square. And because we That cut, picture right there is a, a, a whole day. <laughs> yeah, that was a full day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but cutting those angles to make that box roll into the tongue all in one piece, making sure it was all square. We took a lot of measurements. I wanted to make dang sure that it was it was square and true. Yep. We got the I axle. I think I got mounted. that out of order, but that was the axle mounted and the tires on it. And we took it for a drive around the neighborhood. I followed Joey because I wanted to make sure <laughs> that it wasn't track that it would track right. <laughs> uh, and I was very, very, very proud of myself 
that we got all the geometry right. Oh yeah, that's and then a, it went straight down the road. That that's was, a big deal. If you're if you're not into fabrication and that you know, if you're just watching this because you think you know what we do is cool, great, but boy, geometry is real important. Um, <laughs> I had, I took math a couple of times in high school uh -huh. before I got it. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now you had college math, and it's still tricky. I, you uh, know. Yeah. Uh huh. So, so there we are with it tied behind the Jeep. Yeah. And this is when we were getting ready to go take that, that was drive our, around the yard. That was our test run on it. Yeah. And, boy, I was pleased with that. It tracked just behind the Jeep perfectly. I love the stump jumpers we built on that. Oh, I know. The stump jumpers are great. Yeah. Keep it from keep it from, from hitting, a, hitting a tree or a log and getting yeah. hung up, ripping a tire or a fender off. That's never fun. Yeah, if you look at the build, the stump jumpers actually stick out just past the edge of the tire. So if you get it sideways around something, if you've got a powerful enough engine, you can just pull it around it. Yep, it'll just slide around. Yep. Uh, here we are dry fitting the fender just because we wanted to see how they... How they, How they look, and that's when we figured out that the fenders weren't wide enough for the amount of space that we were built. Yeah. So we might have to go back after we got it finished and scab in a couple of pieces behind the fender. Yeah, and I'll point that out in the video at the end. Um, but you can see we've got jerry cans in that photo, so we can mock those up. And this plastic, that, 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 uh, oh, yeah. what is that? Uh, pecs. That's pecs. That took pecs. half inch pecs and ran it through the frame. Yeah. So that the wiring would have somewhere to live. That was the best idea Barrett came up with because running that PEX through the frame made it so easy to run wire. Um, yeah. And then we don't have to worry about it going around bends and, and weld joints and, and cutting the wire all the wire. time. And if he ever has a short and has to replace the wiring, it's one easy pull. You tie a piece of string to your old wire, pull it through the frame, and then you can put all your new wires and pull the string pull back. back through. Yep. Yep. Here we are just tacking things together and welding. And and like I said, Barrett, he's a he's more of a fabricator. I mean way more of a fabricator than I am. I barely know what I'm doing. But um Barrett made me weld a couple welds on this thing, so I could say I welded on my trailer. Yep. <laughs> it did an okay job, man. It's practice. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, when we built that box before we put the, the sides on it, yeah. I was like, golly, that thing's tall. <laughs> <laughs> But it worked out really good. Yeah, it um, did look funny when yeah. we just, got it, just we, got it started. We planned it out on paper, and, and I kept being like, I don't know. And Barrett was like, trust the process, dude. Trust the process. Yep. You know? <laughs> yep. And we got the sides put on, and suddenly it didn't look so funny anymore. Yep. For sure. For sure. And then, uh, well, the, the trailer hinges you can see in that last picture, or the, the, tail, the tailgate hinges, mm -hmm. bought those off of Amazon. They're just bullet hinges, weld on bullet hinges. Yep. And they, we put them on so that Joey did not want the tailgate to be removable. Right. So we put them on opposing. Yeah. Um, if you want to do it and you can take it off, you put them on facing the same direction and then the yeah. trailer can just slide it off. Yeah. The, the, the tailgate can just slide off. Yeah. But he wanted them solid, so we built them solid. Yeah. And then the, the lumber, I really liked the way we planned that. You can see Barrett welding in that piece of angle iron. Um, in that photo so the there's only one bolt in each of those boards on the back end yep. up here they're captured under that piece of angle iron he put on there like a C so if you have a rotten board or you break a board for whatever reason it's super easy you pull one bolt it pull the board out. out drill one hole in the new board slide it in and you're done yep. and because they're all on the tailgate you can actually stick your board in take your drill come from the bottom side drill center it right punch up. it and you're not hunting for for the whole hole. Yeah. And these all these ideas that we implemented into this is just years of us on different projects running into a problem. And we talked about it a lot before we got started. Like, dude, what about this? Oh yeah. What about this? Oh yeah. Just you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, working yeah. with with other trailers or other builds and and thinking about let's make this as to where simple it's as simple as possible. And if you've got to repair it, it's a simple repair. Right, right. And the, the thing I like about so that we put three jacks on it, one on each back corner and one on the tongue. And we did that so we could level it as, you know, so if you're camping with the rooftop tent on top, you can level it and sleep level. But what I found out through use is it actually worked out really well because if you have a flat, you can jack up 
you can jack up the rear corner and then jack up the tongue to that front to that tire on that side and lifts off nice. the legs. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Built in jack stands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need a jack for that trailer. Well, and as far as camping on uneven ground, I mean, a, a tripod is the simplest way to be stable on any piece of ground. Yep. Um, and so that's essentially what we did with those three jacks is turn this trailer when it's set up for camping into a tripod. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it works great. Man, I, it saved my bacon a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> but so, yeah, here we are with the wall put up, and we just mounted the tire. Yep. Um, and I don't know what I'm standing there contemplating. I think we're <laughs> contemplating how we're mounting the tire in that one because you can see it doesn't have the – Maybe that's what it was. We were talking about how we were going to assemble that uh, that tire mount. Yeah. Now, this is a good photograph. This is when I sent it home with Joey. Um, we had just painted it black just to do a base layer just to you know keep it from rusting uh, because we knew that it was going to be a week or so before he got it home and was actually able to properly paint it. Yeah. And, in fact, the we had, we were painting as we went. Basically, anytime we got done with a substructure, we'd go ahead and hit it with black paint. But at this point, we actually hadn't uh, painted the, the sheet metal. No. It was just the, just the stick. The mostly. frame was all painted. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I drove it home, and uh, there's a picture that you'll see that's um, painted flat, like flat black. Um, and I've, I've wrapped up a couple of things that I didn't want painted. And so, then... Yeah, and, and, and then there's a, a picture of after he got all the red paint on it. Yep. Uh, and it just looked every every shot when he was painting it. Yeah. Like I was every texting stage, you, yeah. I was like, that's so cool, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The more the more paint got on it, the prettier it looked. Yeah. And Barrett really worked hard because I wanted to carry um, two ten gallon gas can or two five gallon gas cans carry ten because. Out in the wilderness in New Mexico, sometimes you're really far from a gas station, and uh, that Jeep of mine gets about uh, pulled in that trailer. It gets about nine miles to the gallon. It's yeah. it's a it's a thirsty girl. Um, so we designed a, a way to hold two five gallon jerry cans, and then I also wanted to be able to put my ice chest on the front so right. we could eat for three or four days out of it. And uh, that took a little figure to get everything. Yeah, it took a little bit of figuring because yeah. we wanted to make sure that the two jerry cans would fit within the tongue, um, and then the ice chest could fit on front of that within the tongue. Right. And so if you look at that picture there, you can see that the ice chest is right on the edge of the yeah of the frame. You know. Yeah. Because you know the whole point of that stump jumper out there is that if you hit the side of that tongue with a tree, it would just drag all the way off the side of the trailer, and it, it would. You know, yeah, it's great to save the trailer. It would suck to like rip Joey's ice chest right. <laughs> and fling it in the woods. Well, and we did build it so the ice chest hangs over a little bit, and the spare tire on the other side also hangs over a little bit on the plane of the stump jumpers. Nothing else does, but both of those are easily removable. So if you really got yourself in, in a, a bind, bind. Yeah. you can pull stuff off, pull it off, and move it. Yeah. Um, and Joey keeps patting me on the back for for the work that I did and the math that I did to make this work. But well, I couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, I'm not the overland thing is not a thing that I've ever thought about or considered. Joey's the one that loves the, the, the boondocking style of camping. And so a lot of the ideas that he came up with were very practical about how we want to set this thing up. Uh, and of course, if he didn't come to me and say, Hey, I got this idea for a trailer. This turned out to be a really cool project I had a lot of fun with that I would have never, never even thought about. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it was great, and we designed it. The funny thing is, is, like, we bought the tent before we ever started building the trailer. Right. Um, and because I figured about six, uh, four by six would be a great size to pull behind, be big enough to camp comfortably in, yeah. but not be overwhelmingly large. Right. So I bought the tent and we built that entire thing. And you can see in this shot that it's exact. <laughs> <laughs> we built it to fit that, that tent. tent and it worked out really well. Um, and we built it so that all of, you know, the whole, everything fit was inside that footprint. Yep. Yep. There's another shot of the front of it. Mm -hmm. And then there's with the tent open and uh, that tent is a king size bed once it's unfolded basically. And um, you, you can sleep, you can sleep real comfortable up there. <laughs>
and I've got a bat wing awning um, attached to it. And me and my buddy, um, we took it hunting last year. And uh, man, that awning was invaluable. It was yeah. a great place to get out of the wind um, and a great place to hunker down and get out of the rain because it rained on this almost a whole trip. Um, great. Yeah. Really good addition to that camping trailer. So. Yeah, the bat wing's pretty cool. Yeah. So this is my camping rig as I imagined it. I have my Jeep, old double tough that I can take pretty much most anywhere. It's a good Jeep and can get to a lot of places in the backwoods. And then this is the trailer that we envisioned and built. Basically what I wanted something that was, I wanted something that was gonna be stout and uh, capable and able to be brought basically anywhere I could take the Jeep. Um, so I wanted something that was, you know, reasonably lightweight and small. I wanted something that had decent ground clearance. Um, and I wanted something that was heck for stout that could be pulled wherever we decided to go. Um, I wanted us to be able to sleep comfortably. Um, I wanted us to have uh, shade. I wanted us to be able to pack a camp kitchen as well as all of our gear for three or four nights in the woods. So this is kind of what we came up with. We designed a four by six trailer. Um, the, the box is four by six. From the hitch here to the back edge with the tailgate closed is exactly 10 feet. These runners you see here, right, are a solid piece from the welds in here all the way to the end of the trailer. And that's a 10 foot piece of uh, one by three rectangle tubing. That's, if I remember correctly, quarter inch wall. Once they're bent in and then you add the little bit of the, the hitch length, it's exactly 10 foot. And so pretty compact little trailer. Everything on it was constructed out of uh, sticks of metal that were the one by three or one by one half and it's quarter inch wall as well. Um, well, I say everything, the majority of it. I mean, we do have some angle iron and things like that on here, but most of it's that stuff. We have four runners underneath the trailer. One, two, three, and four. Um, I have a 3,500 pound Dexter axle with electric brakes on it, shackle kit. And obviously ground clearance isn't gonna be as good as on the Jeep, but pretty darn good for a trailer. Um, I got about, 11 inches of ground clearance there if I remember at the axle Floors just made out of treated uh, deck boards 235 75 15 tires on it. Uh, they're the same rim pattern as the Jeep and back when I built this trailer It was before I had done the lift and everything to my Jeep. So the wheels were actually interchangeable Not so much now. I run 35s on the Jeep now. So yeah, you know bought some prefabricated uh, wheel wells and during the process of putting everything together to get the wheels far enough out they wouldn't rub, we realized that I didn't have enough wheel well. So Barrett actually cut and stitched in an extra piece of metal and rolled it down on either end to kind of fill the void there. The metal is a uh, 16 gauge, just lightweight sheet metal, no big deal. Tailgate is gonna be this same uh, half inch by one inch quarter inch wall tubing with a piece of scrap diamond plate that we were able to find and you can see it's just a, a real simple tailgate with some locks we bought off of Amazon spring locks we bought off of Amazon um, or gate pins nothing to them but they really work great and to lock it in we just drilled a hole in either side of the gate, so it works pretty well. And then welded on a piece of chain for the downs. We have three jacks on it, one on each back corner and then the one on the tongue. So you can level it pretty much anywhere you are. Spare tire is mounted by, basically we just built a mount for it. So what we did was got a big nut and welded some rod to it. Actually, those were two bolts that we cut the heads off of and welded on at angles. And then just, uh, these are threaded balls that we screwed on the end to grab easily. And then this is centered by just a PVC neck that we made to fit to hold it in tight. But the spare just sits on the triangle, the stump jumper we built there. And um, it's just a big bolt 
and that we welded to the frame here. So really nothing to it. Up front, I wanted to be able to take 10 gallons of gas with me. So this is just a, a chain through a piece of uh, plastic tubing to keep it from bashing around on the gas cans too much. But we just built a simple frame to hold. Oh, these are heavy, they're full. We just built a simple frame to hold the, the two gas cans in and then lined it with foam. So nothing really to it there, but it's real easy. And you can see, like I said, I need to clean this thing out. That's why we're getting it ready for the fall. After all these leaves have fallen, it's just pretty nasty. But uh, used a lot of that half inch by one inch um, pipe or you know, uh, rectangle tubing. And then some, um, I think these are one and a half by one and a half, maybe two by two um, angle iron. We cut the edges so they flow nicely. And that's it, man. Um, nothing to it, really. And then we did the same thing for the cooler. Built a little shelf for it. As you can see, there, it's basically just two pieces of angle iron here that the cooler sets in. And then we welded chains with locks. We cut and bent um, just some little brackets, right? That just drop into the cooler right there. So the, when the lid is closed and locked, you can't pull the brackets off. And then we have a lock and a chain that's welded to the frame that you could lock the cooler onto the trailer with. Also welded up a, a nice little ammo can. I usually try to, I usually keep like tools and a jump pack in there, but it's just a nice place to keep it out of the way. Hides it from everything. I've got a, a bat wing awning I put on it that works nicely, but we also wanted to have a nice tent. And this is a Tapui four man tent. We slept, me and my wife and my son, and three dogs in it. Um, it's about the size of a king size bed when it's folded out, so it's pretty decently large. But what we did was built this frame so that there's actually, you can see the frame, it's constructed just like the underside, just out of the one by two instead of the one by three. I mean, sorry, the, the one by half instead of the one by three. But what we did was attached it with some, uh, some bolts here and we welded nuts inside the frame right there so they just bolt right in and then on the front end we just have a couple of pins right you pull these two pins and then you can pull those two bolts in the rear and then you can lift off the whole tent and frame that it's on and you can just use this as a utility trailer if you want so we kind of wanted to make sure it was dual purpose. Um, we live in town, so space is kind of at a premium. So, you know, we try to think of good ways to have multi-uses for things. But anyway, you can see we can carry a ton of gear in here. We have our two camping boxes. We have our cook box. We have a folding table with chairs in it. We have two more tables that sometimes we leave, sometimes we take. It just depends on what we're doing. As well as like some buckets and, and water buckets and some extra chairs and stuff like that that usually go with us. And whenever we were building it, we decided we wanted to incorporate something my son made. My son decided he wanted to get into blacksmithing about two years ago. And so he worked on making some hooks. And so we have the hooks along the inside of the trailer, which is just real nice and handy to hang things whenever you're going back and forth around the trailer. So anyway, we got multiple hooks throughout the trailer that my son forged, which is pretty cool. And then, on the back of the trailer, my brother, before he started Booney's Garage, used to, used to have JBD Fabrication, and so that was his old logo, and I asked him to put that on it. And then, uh, I don't know if you realize, but my Jeep is named Double Tough, like a, a small part-time character in the Walt Longmire Mysteries, which is a book by, a series of books by Craig Johnson that I just happened to really enjoy, and I just thought Double Tough was a funny name, so that's what I named my Jeep. But, another character, from the Walt Longmire series um, is Henry Standing Bear and he owns a bar called the Red Pony. So I went ahead and named this the Red Pony because I thought it was funny and matched the Jeep. Another thing my brother did was, uh, so the, the family has, um, we used to have uh, cattle and we actually had a cattle brand. It was the Lazy JD and 
the JD kind of became synonymous with um, anything in our family that we thought was good work or stood for a good value or stood for, you know, um, pride of ownership. And so when my brother and me were building this trailer, he went ahead and added a JD and weld to the top corner of the trailer there, which I thought was kind of neat. So anyway, that's a quick walk around of the, the red pony and maybe it'll give you an idea for a project you might want to tackle at some point. Um, I love it. Been camping in it for a couple years now and uh, couldn't be happier with it. And anyway, for watching guys, y'all have a good day. So that's the whole build, guys. Um, we had a lot of fun putting that thing together. Uh, Billy and I spent, what, three months? On Sundays, yeah. On Saturdays, yeah. Sundays, yeah. building it. Yeah, um, that old saying, a month of Sundays, that's yeah, what we that, did to this. That was, yeah. that was a month of Sundays, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, we had a really great time building it. And, um, man, it was just a, it was a fun build. And I, I have got so much good memories with it since then. We've drug it all over. We've taken it to Yellowstone. Um, we've taken it um, just camping all over the Southwest and had a really good time. So um, anyway, I'm Joe, yeah, I'm tickled to death that, that you're getting as much usage out of it. Oh as yeah, yeah, you man, know? we love it's it. It's great to do a project. It's great to do a project that's useful, but to have something that someone's using regular and fun, and, yeah, and enjoy it and fun with it. Yeah. You know? so, so anyway, Joey and Barrett for Booney's Garage, and uh, we appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. God bless y'all. Have a good one.